The MQ-9 has long been the benchmark when it comes to combat drones, but since the war started in Ukraine, Turkish drones have been on the rise, and it doesn't seem that they're stopping soon. Join us in today's episode of Drone Zone as we talk about the Turkish counterpart to the MQ-9 Reaper, the Bayraktar Kitzelelma. Baykar Technology recently released a computer-generated film that demonstrates the qualities and capabilities of the Bayraktar Kitzelelma armed drone. The Kitzelelma's first flight is scheduled for 2023, according to the company. The Kitzelelma is the newest member of Baykar Technology's Bayraktar drone line. The design was initially made public in July 2021. In March 2022, the name Kitzelelma, or Red Apple in Turkish, was announced. The concept of the red apple is significant in Turkish tradition, representing an idea or ultimate aim for the nation or state. As a result, the name has a specific meaning that reflects the significance of this difficult endeavor for both the firm and Turkey. The Kitzelelma is a manned drone with a single turbofan engine. The aircraft features a delta wing and canard design with miniature forewings or canards positioned ahead of the main triangular wings. The overall geometry of the airframe is congruent with modern stealth aircraft design, with few protrusions and body angles that appear to be intended for reducing radar cross-section or RCS. To improve stealth, the airframe coating and paint are likely to be made of radar-absorbing material or RAM. According to Baykar Technologies' technical specifications, the Kitzelelma will be able to stay aloft for five hours and have an operational ceiling of 35,000 feet. The aircraft's maximum takeoff weight will be 6 tons, with a payload capacity of 1.5 tons. The maximum combat radius or the distance the Kitzelelma may go from its base to undertake combat missions is specified at 500 nautical miles, which is about 925 kilometers. The Kitzelelma will have an internal weapons bay to carry precision-guided missiles and bombs, which will contribute to the aircraft's stealth. Although Baykar Technologies' photos and videos do not reveal any hard points under the wings for carrying weapons or other devices, their presence is quite likely. For the Kitzelelmo, the Turkish defense industry provides a wide range of precision-guided fire systems. SOMJ air-to-surface cruise missile, HGK, LGK, Miniatur Bomba or MB, Teba and Lassen precision-guided bombs, Akir air-launched anti-ship missile and Gokdoan and Bozdoan air-to-air -air missiles are among them. The Kitzelelma's main sensor will be an active electronically scanned array or AESA radar system, which Asilsan is currently developing, as well as powerful electro-optical cameras and electronic warfare technologies. Among the Kitzelelma's capabilities are fully autonomous takeoff and landing and beyond line of sight or BLOS data link capability. The Kitzelelma is also said to be aircraft carrier compatible with the ability to take off and land on short flight decks. Recent improvements in sensors, electronics, and artificial intelligence, or AI, have enabled the design and construction of increasingly sophisticated drones with multiple sensors and more autonomy during flight. Larger drones are driven by jet engines and capable of carrying precision-guided missile systems that have been developed since the early 2000s. The introduction of Unmanned Combat Aircraft Systems, or UCAS, sparked a debate over the future of air power among aerospace and defense circles as well as security strategists and decision-makers. Technological advancements have begun to imply the arrival of fully autonomous combat aircraft capable of performing a variety of high-risk missions, thereby essentially replacing the need for piloted aircraft, if not completely eliminating this need in the not-too-distant future. One of the main contentious debate themes in the future of air warfare is the composition of Air Force's combat air power. Whether to move to an all UCAS structure or a blend of human and unmanned platforms, and the nature of the latter. If you've made it this far in the video, please subscribe so you won't miss any of our future videos. There are three major perspectives on UCAS's role in the future of air power. The first is an all UCAS air force in which air to air and air to ground missions are carried out by single or multiple types of combat drones combat air patrol or CAP, interception of hostile aircraft, and escorting allied air, sea, or land forces against air threats are all examples of air-to-air -air missions. Close air support of friendly ground units, precision strikes, standoff strikes of high-value targets or HVTs, tactical air support of marine operations or TASMO, suppression of enemy air defenses or SEAD, and destruction of enemy air defenses or DEAD are all examples of air-to-ground missions. 
Armed drones have previously only been employed for air-to-ground missions as well as intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition and reconnaissance or ISTAR. Aerodynamic design and high-speed performance engines are used to create agility, speed and maneuverability in air-to-air -air warfare. Furthermore, aerial warfare, particularly with invisible range or WVR combat, commonly known as dogfighting, necessitates immediate decision-making and reaction skills, as well as complete situational awareness. These requirements place a significant strain on a drone's sensors and computational equipment. Although software and hardware technology are promising in terms of providing effective solutions to these cognitive challenges, the decision-making cycle and delegation of authority to a fully autonomous system in air-to-air -air combat is a complex ethical, hierarchical and organizational debate rather than a technological issue. The second school of thinking on the future of air power envisions a hybrid of manned and unmanned systems with drones used for high-risk missions such as SEAD or DEAD, electronic warfare and precise strike of HVTs from standoff ranges. The most notable scheme in this method, known as manned-unmanned teaming or MUM-T, is to utilize a number of UCAS under the leadership of a piloted combat aircraft. The UCAS used in this model is referred to as a faithful wingman. A faithful wingman is a drone with enough flight performance to accompany fighters and the intelligence to support them semi-autonomously. There are various development programs for faithful wingmen around the world, including the Kratos XQ-58A Valkyrie, Boeing MQ-28 Ghostbat, and Sukhoi S-70 Okotnik. The third way is for UCAS to gradually take over combat missions. This argument might be viewed as a compromise between the preceding two ideas. While it is true that establishing a wholly drone-based air force is more of an organizational, ethical and doctrinal issue, it is a possibility. UCAS are already well suited for the majority of air-to-ground operations, but optimizing them for air-to-air -air warfare will necessitate additional study on AI, well-defined operational concepts and legal and ethical frameworks. The Turkish Air Force or TUR-AF combat fleet includes approximately 240 F-16C or D Fighting Falcon and 40 F-4E-2020 aircraft, 7 KC-135R tankers and 4 E-17 Bars Kartal Airborne Early Warning and Control or AEWNC aircraft assist these combat aircraft. The earliest versions of the F-16 fleet, around 35 Block 30 type F-16s, have received major structural improvements allowing them to function well until the 2030s. The TUR AF originally planned to replace the F-4E-2020 fleet with the F-35A Joint Strike Fighter and operate with a Mili Muharib Yukak or MMU-TFX, which will enter service in the late 2020s and will replace the F-16s. However, following Turkey's procurement of the Russian Federation's S-400 air defense system in 2019, the United States cancelled the supply of the F-35As to TUR AF and pulled Turkey from the project. This development has had an impact on TUR AF's modernization plans. As a result, Turkey requested the sale of 40 F-16Vs and 80 kits to modify existing F-16s to the F-16V standard to bridge the capability gap until the MMUs arrive. The F-16V is the most recent aircraft of the F-16 family with enhanced sensors and capabilities. Tur AF's armed drone fleet consists of the Bayraktar Akinci from Bayraktar Technology and the Anker S from Turkish Aerospace. With its 1500 kg payload carrying capability and BLOS communication, the Akinci has recently entered service and considerably improved the Tur AF's I-Star and Strike capabilities. The Kitzelelna serves as a force multiplier for the Tur AF, especially when deployed as a faithful wingman to the MMU. A number of Kitzelelmas may conduct long-range precision strikes, electronic warfare and CAP missions over a vast area around Turkey or in overseas missions in collaboration with an MMU and other command and control assets. Furthermore, Baykar Technology claims that the drone will have carrier capability, implying that the aircraft is being considered as a potential aircraft carrier by the Turkish Navy. Without a doubt, the Kitzelelma project presents numerous technological and engineering hurdles. Many of these difficulties apply to the world's top defense contractors as well because they incorporate innovative or disruptive technology and advances. Turkey's drone skills and experience as well as the dynamic character of its defense industrial base may provide it an advantage in meeting the aforementioned issues. 
Turkey has undergone substantial upgrading in terms of military might, strike and I-star capabilities, and power projection potential during the last 20 years thanks to the expansion of its national defense sector. Regional competitiveness, as well as Turkey's growing economic and industrial presence in the area, necessitate a military with full operational freedom and deterrence power. Air power is a critical component of this desired posture, and Turkey intends to reform its air force along these lines using indigenous technologies. That's it for today's video. Let me know what you think of the drone automation concept. Do you think we're ready for it yet? I hope you've enjoyed watching this video just like I've enjoyed making it, and make sure to comment with any future videos that you're interested in watching. I'll be seeing you all soon, but until then, watch this video to learn more about the Terminator drones used by the Ukrainian military. And as always, subscribe or crash.